Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video guys we're going to be going over linear velocity and angular velocity and so you can do like some weird stuff like this where you can like turn your character and like all different sorts of stuff that you can use using these velocities. So let's get right into it. So guys angular and uh, linear velocity are constraints in Roblox. So if I put in a linear velocity there's our constraints and here's all the properties here. Now what linear velocity is well, first of all, if you don't know what velocity is, velocity is the speed of how something moves in a direction. So linear means straight, so it means straight velocity. Um, I'll, so f furthermore on that, straight velocity, this moves a part in a straight direction on whichever axis you put in the constraint. Now it says here on Roblox that this is, should be only be used for a constant rate of speed. Uh, this is just because you know it's linear velocity, so it's in a straight constant speed. Uh, so, and it even says you should use a vector force if you want to control the amount of force applied, the amount of velocity, and also use assembly linear velocity in the parts properties to if you have if you want to assign an initial velocity but anyways to start off we have our part we have linear velocity now if we go in there's like some appearance type stuff that if you have enabled and whatnot make it enabled and not enabled so now we come down to an important part attachments attachment zero this actually needs an attachment into it so you want to insert an attachment onto your parts and assign attachment zero to your attachment and there's our like green dot there there's our attachment and we assign the linear, linear velocity to that attachment. And now we have the limits. We have our force limit mode and our max force. So basically what this is saying, the force limit mode, um, there's per axis and magnitude. But when it's just set to magnitude like it is now, that means that the, the force will be less than the max force that we put down here. But when we set it to per axis, the the uh, the force on the axis it will be less than the the max axis force well, yeah, I'll just pull up a picture I think on screen of what I'm reading but but anyways uh, when you have this set to per axis the you can set the max force on whichever axis so sorry if that was confusing what I was just reading off I was just trying to see what the depth form was saying but uh, when you set that to per axis, you can set the limit for every axis. It's not that hard. But if we just set it back to magnitude, we can set the max force to however we like. So that's the amount of force, uh, like the amount of force on it. All right, so the next thing is force limits enabled. Uh, what this is saying is this is saying like uh, uh, determines how much or uh, how much of the constraint force will be limited. Um, so if or it, it can be unlimited to a, a force so if it's enabled uh, the constraint force will be based on the limit the force uh, the force limit um, thing we have up here but when it's disabled like the physics and Roblox will apply a force that is like large enough to uh, to achieve the target velocity that we want so when we set uh, the force limits off it gets rid of the limits that we have up here and so when we put in like uh, 5 for the z value it um, just puts it at a constant rate or you know just a good enough rate for it to move and you can also set that in the velocity settings that I just changed so we're going to skip down to vector velocity and obviously that just changes the amount of velocity on whichever axis so you can actually do something really cool with this too, guys. So like I'm going to have this part and uh, I'm just going to get rid of the base plate. And when I go to the server and like mess around with the values of the velocity, like I'm going to change this to maybe 10,000 because again, like it's a bigger part. So that means like it'll need more force to like push it. And I'm going to set this to maybe a thousand. I'm not really sure, but 5,000. I don't really want to go overboard and I like go flying, but I might just have to see what the values here, like 20, maybe I just need to up this, 
Yep, see there I go flying. <laughs> and then there I go. And then I go off. I'm gonna try that again. So like what you can do, which is really cool, um like m make the platform go like move back and forth. So I'm gonna set this force, make sure you do it on the server. I'm gonna make this force have like fifteen thousand. Set this to five thousand. It's like I have to find the right amount of values. And there I'm moving. There we go. And my player's keeping with it. And so you can make this like move back and forth instead of just using twin servers. That's an option. But see I'm moving, but you can make it move in whichever axis and then we just like go flying off the base plate. There we go. So now on to angular velocity, which means it just applies velocity at an angle. You know, it just makes it kind of rotate. It's an angle. Uh, so again, if you want to control the amount of torque applied, like linear velocity, you use a torque constraint instead and assembly angular velocity for initial speed. Now, it's kind of like uh, you need an attachment for angular velocity as well. So you put in angular velocity, you have your attachment zero, set that to the attachment. Everything else, you have your angular velocity settings here, your max torque, and your relative to, which uh, doesn't make that big of a difference from what I've seen. So for this part, I'm going to set this to 2,000 and set the x to... Uh, angular velocity is like really touchy with the value, so I'm going to say like maybe 2. So it's like kind of touchy, but... Let me just see. And there we go. It, um, see, it is applying the angular force. And it's making it, like, move like this. It, it, it is moving in an angle, like, uh, but just of how a block is, uh, it it uh, makes it move like that. So, like, if you use a, I mean, I guess you could use a sphere, but, yeah, it's pretty much angular velocity change all your settings uh, another cool thing is if you set the y-axis to a number that is what actually gives it the spin it's like you press run there you go it's actually like spinning the part now so an easy way to spin a part is using angular velocity that's also how I did it for my player's character so when you go into the game and go to the server go to your character and puts angular velocity in your player. Set the max torque to like 2000, set this to like three, and set the attachment to root attachment, and that makes your character spin. So if you want to do like a little cool trick with your character or something like kind of feedback like, you can make your character spin like I just did. And adding on to that, guys, this is also how you can make, like, a punch tool that sends a player back on whichever axis, like a punch tool in your character. You would, again, put a linear velocity. You need to put linear velocity. And then you would set the attachment, first of all, uh, to root attachment. Set this to 2,000. And you would have your values in here. Like, if you're scripting, uh, set your values in here of which way the player is being sent back. So I'm actually gonna make um, that tool for you guys, like a knockback tool, just so you guys can see like an actual example of how these velocities can be used. All right guys, so I've cooked up a tool. Um, There's a red ball of death, right? And we're gonna get in there the character. We're gonna click on him and he just goes flying. This knockback tool just sends anybody flying. So that's one of the things you can do with a vector velocities and there's so many things uh you can do too and yeah guys that was today's video if you guys did learn something from this video uh or you guys uh enjoyed this video please hit the like button and the subscribe button i'll see you guys in the next video peace